Hello and welcome to Upfront on the Voice of America. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. In studio, as always, we always have somebody special. And today we have Mr. Henok Tesfai from the Washington, D.C. region here. He's an Ethiopian-American entrepreneur, very successful entrepreneur. Henok, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having now, me. Now, you go by Dr. Mr. What is... Uh, I think you call me Henok. Henok is not. You know, <laughs> you know? Let's talk about you and your story. Where does your story start, especially your entrepreneurial story? I think, uh, thank you. Uh, my story starts here in Washington, D.C. I'm based out of Washington, D.C. I came in uh, early 90, when maybe I was 14 years old, a long time ago. I came to look for education and the family sent me here to go to school and study. And uh, I liked it. DC was good to me mm -hmm. and I decided to stay here. And that's where the journey starts. And uh, Now, DC, as a person who has lived in DC for over two decades, I know this city has significantly grown. Uh, how was DC, what, 22, 23 years ago when you started business? When I started a business, I think I started the business 1998. Mm -hmm. uh, we started a business on U Street area. That's why I called the company U Street Parking because I didn't even know how to name the company at that point. And we were on U Street. I said, you know what, I'll call it U Street Parking. When I started U Street, it was 12 and U Street where they have the Lincoln Theater now. And I secured a parking spot, 22 spaces, and that's where everything starts. Mm -hmm. It was born, that's why the company's U Street, I mean, U Street was born on U Street. So that's one of the iconic area for you know U Street parking. Right. So that's why I started the business on U Street. Right. How has the city grown in the last 22 years? What are some of the changes that you see that are actually amenable to a person like a business person like yourself? Yeah, the last 22 years uh, I'm in the business. I mean, I've seen big difference in the in the city. I've seen a lot of change. The city has been growing as fast as that you expected because. It was very tough, a uh, rough area when I started the business in, on U Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, people were trying to sell their house for sixty, seventy thousand dollars. $70,000. You can't not even touch that it's house. Now, it's now millions it's now of dollars A million worth. or two million yeah. dollars. So I've seen the areas changing on the real estate development, affordable housing, the infrastructures, you know, the people, and the, a lot of people are moving to the city. New immigrants New coming immigrants in. coming from all over the world. I mean, the city has 700,000, you know, residents, but the city growing, changing every daily basis. Mm. Because uh, we should mention to our listeners that, uh, and viewers that you, actually your business, your primary business is parking. Yes. And you own a, a, a number of parking lots in the Washington, D.C. area. You have expanded to other regions, uh, but not just regular parking. These are like massive parking lots, uh, and that's where you found your success. Where did you get the bug to start, in, to, to, to get into business? Yeah, just to you know, make sh make it short for you to understand. I you know I, I used to work when I came to this country. I worked in a parking company. That's where I got the experience. You know, I was parking cars and as parking attendants, cashiers and supervisors. That's what I learned the business. So I took that experience and founded my own company called U Street Parking. I started with U Street Parking in 1998. Since then, you know, it's been changing. I mean, yes, we manage. You know, I started with four employees in my life in, in 1998. Now we have 800 employees all over in the country. Uh, we are the larger minority parking company in the country as we speak. We are not only in DC. We manage the three airports in New York, JFK, LaGuardia, Newark was a partner, ABM was our I mean, majority partner there. And we, we manage the two airports here for the last 11 years, Dallas and Reagan, which is a capital city, the nation's capital. We, we also manage Orlando International Airport, one of the busiest airports, also New Orleans Airport is a partner there as well. So we started from DC Small Parking and we grew our business to a national company. So mm -hmm. I'm very proud of to do that because we're giving an opportunity for people like us, who looks like us, giving mm -hmm. them an opportunity to work with us. Mm -hmm. So that's where the parking company started. But I have vertical companies that, you know, different things that we have done and, you know, because I, even though I started with parking, uh, you know, now we're focused on, you know, you know, real estates, affordable housing, focus on different things, Potomac management company that we have. We manage a lot of property management. Wow, so you've well. expanded your business, yes. not just parking to other areas. Yes. And there was a point, I think, when you ran a restaurant, is that correct? Or you, one of your family members? Yes, the restaurant was open in 2005. You know, my mom, as you all know, I mean, she was one of the best Ethiopian chef 
in this area mm. and we decided my mom was like to cook in the house so I decided are you not saying this just because she's your mom no no I'm not saying that she's my mom <laughs> I mean the community knows that no problem but yes. you know I opened I agree I, agree. I opened that for my mom who was on U Street as well you know U Street has been good to me you mm -hmm. know the city has been good to me so I, I like to put things on 9th Street we opened a restaurant the restaurant been successful the last 15 years it was it's called the Tete Ethiopian restaurant mm -hmm. now my mom retired so Oh, she's not in that business anymore. Yeah. But, but the institution the remains. Yes, the institution still remains. Right. Yes. Um, how, what does it take to run a successful business? I mean, you've expanded from how many? Four employees to now hundreds of employees. Yes. What does your day look like? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, it takes a lot of courage and uh, business. When you started and when you are now, it's totally different, you know, it needs a good leadership, people like me and leadership delegating because you can't do everything by yourself. Having smart people next to you, smarter than you are. Mm. And surrounding yourself surrounding with people. Surrounding yourself with smarter yeah. people than you are and bringing people, bringing experts, you know, spending money to, you know, good, ed good educated people that you can help and experienced people who can help you. Mm. And also a network that you build because you can't, I mean, you can't open business. You got to build that network. An African brother that I wanted to let, you know, uh, the audience, the relationship is a key. Any business, you can open any business, but relationship and network. You have right. to network with the right folks. Right. They say network is your net worth. Yes, mm. your network is your net worth. You got to build that relationship. Relationship is a key. Any other businesses in this, my experience is 25 years. Mm. You have to build a relationship and exchange information. And you need to be the right place at the right time. Mm. So that's what I learned. And, you know, I started my business when I was young, but I learned it in my 22 years of business experience. That's what I wanted to share to business. And looking for capital, so relationship with banks, relationship with government officials, so relationship with a lot of different people. You just need to really put yourself out there to build and, you know, you know try to, you know, brand yourself. Mm. How would you describe the Ethiopian diaspora community here in the Washington, D.C. area? Thousands, very vibrant, very entrepreneurial. Uh, you're, you're one of them. How do you describe it for somebody who doesn't know Washington, D.C. and its uniqueness? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Washington, D.C., like you say, there's a lot of Ethiopian diaspora. I live here, I believe, I don't know, D.C. area, 40, 50,000. But in DMV area, maybe we're 200, 250,000 Ethiopian diaspora live here. I mean, there are a lot of very powerful people, you know, uh, they're a lot in, of influential, influential people, yeah. you know, uh, they do a lot of different things. They're in, engaged into community business, you know, you call it, you know, I'm in the parking industry, real estate. They're, they're very hardworking, you know, diaspora in this, in this area. So I think they're getting more recognized even though in, 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 the, in the area world, I mean, in the District of Columbia, you know, their voice is heard. So they do a lot of different stuff and uh, they're into restaurants, in gas stations, parking, real estate. They, they, they're not afraid because to try anything because this is like, I think the second from Ethiopia, the second largest Ethiopian community in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. So I think this is the biggest one in this that's area. That's huge. Yes, that's, that's huge. huge. And they're in all types of businesses. Yeah. Um, is there something about your culture that actually encourages inter entrepreneurship? In our culture, I think, uh, yes, because when you come here, I think uh, our work ethics, you know, when we come to the, the U.S. or in this area, because they see everyone is working, and, you know, and then I think they follow in the footsteps of others. So I think that's what they get into. If someone open restaurants, mm. they open restaurants. If someone open to parking, they follow, do that. They, they like to start something to be successful. And then I think we have a huge network. I mean, we all help each other. Mm. We work together. We exchange information. And that's why I'm very proud of the Ethiopian diaspora in Washington. They really, you know, has done mm. a lot of, you know, the legwork to work together. I think that's the experience that I like to share with them because mm. we want to work as a team so you can be successful. I think that's the hallmark of every successful yeah. diaspora community around the world is yeah. being able to share knowledge, to bring each other in on opportunities yeah. and kind of create pathways for others who are coming behind yourself. And if you want to see successful people, you, you, know, you look at the people who, who were there before them and yeah. how they're able to pull others behind them. Uh, let me ask you as a black entrepreneur in the Washington DC area or in America, what are some of your top challenges? What would you say is a top challenge for somebody who, who is trying to get into business, things that you look forward to? Yeah, the top challenges in this country, as you all know, I mean, first you're a foreigner, you come into this country, you know, and you don't have access to capital, 
you need to have a relationship, you don't know what to go, what to do. So that's why you need people like us or someone who can mentor you because I've been mentor, you know, so many times so in the airport world when I get into it, there was a company to really mentor us to that. So I think my goal is I think they need to find somebody who can mentor them. You know, it's like a mentor porridge program, learn something from the others. I think exchange information and program and then access to capital, access to network. You know, relationship is a key. That's how you really, I think I tell everyone, you can't just open a business. You really need to build up that opportunity for them. Um, and finally, I guess I wanted to ask you, I know you're giving back to the community in different ways. I wanted you to plug some of uh, the, 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 the things that are outside of the business arena that you're actually passionate about, including some of your philanthropic endeavors that you've been engaged with. Yeah, uh, it's, it, thank you. That's a great question, actually. I'm glad you asked that at the end. But uh, I give back a lot to this community. I open an opportunity for our community to come and work with me. That's another one. Two, I support a lot of nonprofits in this in African diaspora, not only Ethiopians, you know, any African diaspora who support and giving back to the, the community or in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, as we speak, you know, I, I, uh, I'm the chairman of the Mary Joy Foundation in the USA. Uh, Mary Jo was founded in 20 years ago in Ethiopia. So I went and 10 years ago found this organization and I took 60 kids to raise them wow. and in, on my own. So I still support them. The kids grow and they leave and then they add another 30 kids. So I mm -hmm. try to support them. So I like to give back to the community. I also created a job opportunity in Ethiopia. I run the, interna the Ethiopian International Airport as, as in a parking operator. It's not because of the money there. We want to transform information, technology, knowledge. You know, we wanted to let them know because when people think parking is just the parking cars on the street, mm. but now the airport there, uh, you know, really learned a lot. And from where we take, there's took more to the operation of, of, yeah, the, of the operation of the business. business. And just, we created mm. 300 jobs. Wow! You know, so we have 300 employees that work there. Also, we expanded doing a real estate in Ethiopia. As we speak, we're building uh, a bigger real estate. Uh, building that in order for us to give back to the community. Also, people can understand what, you know, different standard of the U.S. standard kind of an apartment building that people can see. So that's why really I've been doing that mm -hmm. so far. So our goal is for African, uh, for African country, not only Ethiopia. We want to expand our relationship to Nigeria, Ghana, other places. We're very much interested in investing if we have the local or best partner in the country because you can't just do business from U.S. to Africa. you got to look for the right and good, a very honest partner in order Lo to expand partners. our business. Yeah. Local partners, yeah. whether parking, real estate, we're focused on real estate and parking, also infrastructures, also anything like you know mining and sectors that I really want to focus on. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of room to play in Africa, but you got to have a right partner. Like, you know, I tell the folks in Washington, the Ethiopian diaspora, to work with us. When you go to different countries, you got to really play with find the right, the the find the local, you know, really very honest partner in order for you to expand. Yeah. So that's what we're here for, you know, looking forward to expand our business other countries in Africa. Absolutely. Mr. Tesfai, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your story and your journey and congratulations on your success. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're thank welcome. you. Thank you.